We made it through the 80s, guys. We are now on the 1990s series. Summer has come and we basically went a full year of the 80s. And so we made it through there and we were on the 1990s. But as you can see, everything looks the same. Equipment looks the same, stuff like that. So throughout this process, as the farm changes, you guys are gonna see us like build and buy different equipment instead of it just randomly appearing as soon as we start the video. The 1990s bring a lot of new equipment, new houses, new buildings we're gonna change out, new trucks, even though I'm gonna keep my 71 because I love the 71, but check this out. As far as tractors goes, we can now go into the 8000 series John Deere. If we wanted, we could even go into the 10 series. There's a 2000 and 2001 model, I think, of the 10 series, but in 1999, you could still order and get a 2000 series model and have it delivered in 1999. So technically, this is on the table. It'd be more realistic if we got a 00 series. And then on Casey's side, we get an 8900 series. There's all sorts of tractors. And then check this out. This is what I'm most excited for. I might talk Buck into buying this. I think I can for field work. We'll see. But this came out in 1995, so we might go after a quad track. With all this, me and Buck have been really honest. We haven't cheated a dime when it comes to like equipment and purchasing land. And so recently, Buck spent 35 or $32,000 of the farm's money and purchased some more land, and he purchased an acreage for himself. This farm that he bought has like four different fields. They're kind of small. They're all in corn. So we'll have to harvest those fields too. We're going to have a lot to harvest this fall. And then it has a couple sheds, a couple of silos. It's it's a neat farm. And so this is where uh, this is where Buck's going to live. If you guys remember this, this is actually where that, that uh, Daniel kid, he was running. He stopped here and then we pinned him down and he was running and he stole Mary Lou's car out of her garage. And so she actually moved to town and then she wanted to know if we wanted to buy this. And Buck was like, yeah, I'll buy it so you can see he's got his pickup truck, his Trans Am in there. It's a nice acreage. It's got a couple different machine sheds here. I mean, these are nice. We got all the storage we'll ever need. She's got a lot of small garages, got a hoop building. Oh, there's rental man. So this is my house. This is where I reside, my bungalow. I read my books at night. I got uh, some orders from the catalogs where I'm gonna be buying a lawnmower possibly. Got a lot of machine sheds also set up for animals if I wanted to do anything, but I highly doubt we're just gonna keep all the operation at your place unless we wanted to expand. Uh, just a handful of different- We got the bin though. The That'll be nice since our bin's yeah. like so messed up at home. I mean, at least this is all empty, but I guess if you needed overflow, you could bring your cattle down here or the pigs if we needed it. I mean, this is neat, Buck. This is nice, got an old dairy facility in yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's kind of run down. Oh, apparently there's still food in here. That's gonna be moldy. And then I think this is a full-blown dairy operation going on in here. Whoa. Oh my! They left the cows. <laughs> We're rich, Buck. Yeah, Where? we can buy more equipment. Yeah. I can buy more equipment. <laughs> my farm, my money. It was the farm's money, Buck. We had 80 grand, then we spent 30 grand. Uh, I did not think I would have cattle in there. Okay. Uh, then just a regular, basic other machine shed back here. I believe this. Is, like, you probably already went and looked in this, didn't you? Oh yeah. It's a nice machine it's, shed. So that's a nice cold storage one, so you can put all the bigger implements in there if we just wanted to keep stuff under roof not heated of course and then there's just another like little garage right there and then the most important thing this came with two different fields he has an alpha alpha field back here actually four different fields one right here one right here all these are in corn cornfield 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 across the street small cornfield and then there's like a little hay alfalfa alpha field back here so we're gonna have a lot of corn to harvest that leaves us with this field 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 don't tell buck this but we're gonna need two combines no with the way you're gonna think about things we're gonna need three we'll see well i'm keeping my old truck man i don't need a new truck this baby's been run good for 30 years now i'm gonna sell the charger I am, I'm going to sell the charger. charger to get the Okay. Yeah. You say you need me to go spray, don't you? Yeah, we need some spray and some uh, liquid nitrogen spread also. Wait, Buck, do you want this trailer? I don't think I... It'd be better if you have this trailer, honestly. Hey, you can put it over here if you want to. You're, well, you're going to need it with a sprayer, so hook it up to your truck. Of course. If it can pull Don't only it. drive the fun car. This old square body is going to be able to pull that. Well, I guess you can say I have a really crappy neighbor now. Honestly, me and Buck were talking about making like a back road so we can get to our places with like a gravel road that cuts right to our farm. Because if you look right there, there's his farm like back there. Okay, it's time. That house over there is old. It needs remodeled. It's basically falling apart. I kind of made the decision to buy a house. So we're going to build a house right here. And then we're also going to build another shop. 
So we're going to get a little bigger shop also. We'll still use that shop for some stuff. But we have a nice shop that will be going right here. Now for buildings and like adding on, we don't use any money. So we do cheat in money for any buildings. Because like land grading, it destroys your bank account and like buildings and stuff. So that's the only thing me and Buck cheat in. Everything, all the tractors, land, everything that's bought with every dollar we earn. And there goes Buck. So let's jump up to heaven. Get building this dream. Well, okay, we're out of heaven. So, got my house, and we got the shed built, and this thing looks amazing. Got the trees, got a couple medium oak trees out here. Looks pretty darn good. Got our asphalt driveway across here, and then around the back, we got a driveway that comes to the back of the farm, so we kind of like connected the farm. The farm still flows really good. And then this is one of my favorite buildings, favorite sheds we got this is going to be kind of a garage and this can fit almost any tractor in here it's got a 16 foot door if we get any bigger equipment yeah it won't be able to fit it but this is perfect shop so this is going to be our main shop now and then the other shop is going to be kind of like a small maybe like a hobby shop but this will be the main shop for oil changing got this underground got a workbench it's going to work perfect and then this is cold storage there's buck's place down there so from the back of the house it lets me keep an eye on buck make sure he's okay over there not fooling around or anything and then check this out, the house, you can go inside. Got my own TV. They're coming out with these things called flat screens. I don't think they'll ever add up to be anything. I think these box TVs are perfect. Um, got tables. It actually, I'm gonna be honest, it feels like a 90s house. Like the interior, everything doesn't feel modern, which is awesome. Got a couple donuts for Buck there. And then of course, we got Old Glory flying up there. I think we had like $65,000, so I'm gonna put it down to fifty or $56,000. So now we have the same money in the farm and we gotta switch to 90s equipment. So we gotta buy some more equipment here. Okay, so Buck got done spraying. I gotta spray this cornfield. Um, not spray it, we're gonna spread some 32% on it. It's 50% fertilized. So we're gonna go through, put another, some more 32% on to get all of our pounds of nitrogen on this field. And then we gotta swap out the sprayer and get herbicide in it and go because you can see there's weeds coming up and there's grass coming up. So we gotta spray this, otherwise this is gonna rob our yield, some of this grass and weeds. So I was talking to Buck and I was like, we should get another sprayer. I don't know. Why do you always say you talk to me about this stuff? Do you know damn well I wouldn't let you buy another sprayer? Hey, I never, No. no I never no, said your no, answer no, though, no, Buck. No. I said we. T I said I mentioned it to you. I never said you yeah, talked. Yeah, and then all hey, of a sudden we I, end up hey. getting it like I'm supposed to be agreeing that we're gonna go buy more stuff. I never said you talked back to me. I just said I talked to you. Right. <laughs> said the same thing about the combine. He's like, oh, I think that'd be a good idea. No, it wasn't. Okay, Buck, go spray some herbicide, man. You know, the only one that has a sprayer. Yeah, that's why we need a second. I'm telling you guys, most farmers have the big, fancy, self-propelled sprayers. This one works good. It's just if we had another one. With the amount of acres me and Buck are covering now. Oh, it's going to be close, boys. We have this to go right here. And we have 6%, 75 gallons left in the sprayer. If you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, it's going to be close. I do not want to go get more fertilizer. If there's like half an acre that we don't get, it's fine. We can see what the corn grows on a couple of units less of nitrogen than we actually need. It'd be a cool test. Oh, I think we're going to make it. Okay, yeah, we made it. So now what we got to do is switch this out and get herbicide in the tank, which herbicide is going to kill all these weeds, whereas we previously we were putting on fertilizer. So we'll switch out to herbicide. Okay, we're going to get this trailer full herbicide. Buck's got the tank right here parked. So that's filling. 
And then also we got a neighbor that has a sprayer that's not using it right now because he got all of his spraying done. So we're actually going to rent that sprayer from him. So we'll have two sprayers. I'll run a sprayer and Buck will run a sprayer because we, we need to get this knocked out. All these weeds and stuff, this is a mess. It's robbing yield. So I'm going to pick up the neighbor's sprayer. I got to check these fields. These are the fields that Buck bought actually. And we got to make sure that there's no weeds in this corn. Okay, we're going to have to spray these too. So we got a ton of spraying to do. We should honestly get three sprayers. No, 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 no. So Buck's in the shop getting, I think the duel's taken off the 47. I think that will go through the field without knocking down corn crop if we take off the duels. I'm the truth. Okay, let's see. Normally this would be realistic and you wouldn't run down any corn, but here we go. Please don't smash corn. Yes, it works. We're good. Okay, perfect. Buck, do you want to run the 47 or 4020? I don't really care what I run. Uh, I guess since I'm already in this, I might as well do that. Okay, we got 4,200 gallons of herbicide on the back. Two sprayers. Two boys that are ready to knock out some acres. Might have lost the seed pallet. Don't look. She's chugging up the hill here. And she's squatted. Got a lot of weight on her. The old 250. We're gonna get this herbicide knocked out. Killing all the weeds. Okay, so we got all the home farms knocked out. Me and Buck got them done. I just refilled the sprayer. Now we're gonna go do some of our other fields. I've got one that's real weedy across here. We bought that from an old lady a while, I think this year, and then Buck's got one of his farms over there that we need to do also. So we're gonna split up. I'm gonna go left, he's gonna go right. Okay, that field is done. I'm gonna cut over and we're good. We're sprayed. I think spray season is over besides for fungicide, but everything's sprayed. Buck's just finishing up over here on 37. You can see him going on the notepad I got here, the 1990s notepad. I'm gonna spray off the tractor, clean off the trailer. It's a little dirty. The sprayer, I should say. And then I'm just gonna park this at the shop at home. Since we got a bunch of space in there, we'll park that in the shop back there. And then Buck returned the other sprayer to the neighbor. I think it was 1500 rent. So we got the neighbor all paid off and stuff. and. We're good, just clean off the 47. On top of that, here comes Renault Man Buck with his brand new truck. He just picked this thing up. He got rid of the Chevy, I think. And he got a Dodge. And I came in here myself. Richard's been wheeling and dealing lately. So basically what he did is someone bought this, didn't want it, brought it back. He bought it for cheaper at auction. I then took my truck to him. He bought it off me and we basically washed. So it cost me nothing to get this truck. Got a 5.9 Cummins in it. Looks to be someone did an air intake on it. It's it's kind of hyped up a little Five bit. Five speed? To, uh, or six, six speed. speed? Six speed, okay. Gosh dang. That looks good. This can be the road trip truck when we go to the Farm Progress Show and National Farm Machinery Show down in Louisville. We'll take this truck and then mine will just be the, the daily. Basically. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> that sounds so good. Okay, Buck's gonna be in love with his truck. Uh, his wife's gonna be a little disappointed, probably. But, it's good for Buck. I need to test this thing out. Hey, you now. Don't go ripping on it too much. You know how badly you almost tore up my Chevy. <laughs> Jeez, Buck! Oh my gosh, fourth gear. Fifth gear. Holy crap! Oh my gosh, okay, well, holy Toledo. 
Now, I'm not the guy that's probably gonna buy the exact same truck as Buck, but man, this makes me want to get this exact same truck as Buck. Buck? What? 10 out of 10. <laughs> you enjoy it? Yeah, I, I think I might be a Dodge guy now. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. We'll see how well I've heard these transmissions don't hold up too well. That's their only real downside. Okay, guys. So, since it, we're now in the 90s, these two tractors are getting traded off. I want to keep the 4020 around, but the mod itself, like, it doesn't have much top-end power. When we get up to a hill, this thing just dies down, and it just doesn't operate good. Otherwise, we keep this 4020. It's just the mod itself is bad. The 4020 is great, so we're getting rid of it. We're keeping the 4755. We're keeping the six or the 806, 856 or 806 down there. Keeping the Gleaner Combine, but we're getting rid of the Alice. I'll show you guys what we're getting. Chet's gonna be delivering the new stuff, and then these are gonna get traded out. This we can trade in for roughly eighty thousand. This is like eight grand, and then with the extra money, we're gonna uh, purchase more tractors. Which we might have to go to the bank for a little bit because our crops in ground. And once we get the crop out, then we'll be able to basically pay these off. Okay, so after we did all of our trading. And after these tractors, these are sold. Now we did all exchange with the dealership. These are sold. This is sold. Both these are sold. And then we bought two new tractors. So Chet, I think is supposed to be bringing the tractors, unless he screwed up the order. Oh my gosh. It's all good. Oh, he ran, Chet, he ran over my flowers, man. It's all good. After those two purchases, we are $30,000 in debt. Um, we're trying to stay realistic with everything on equipment and land when we buy it and chemicals and stuff like that. So we got to come up with 30 grand to kind of finish paying for these tractors. But we basically spent $180,000 on two new tractors. Where's your brother at? He's driving around his new truck. Is he now? We got a Dodge. You seen those new Dodges out? Dodge, uh, it's a 24 valve Cummins diesel. Probably what you're, you have in your semi there. A little different. Do I know you? Yeah. Grant, known each other for like 40 years. Are you my son? No. Oh, Grant, that's yeah. right. I met you at the gas station last week. Yeah, well, you hold a lot of heifers for How's us back in the day. your Uncle Jeffrey? He's doing good. He said he, he said he could still kick your butt still on an arm wrestle. Who's Jeffrey? Oh, shoot. Chet's getting a little dementia. Just stay with me. It's all good. Forget about Jeffrey, Chet. All right. All good. Just get her loaded. Uh, might as well get on the road. I gotta. I can't see too well anymore these days. I snuck out of the nursing home at seven o'clock this morning, so <laughs> well, they can't contain me yet. <laughs> what was your sister's name again? Her name was Buck. My ex-wife ain't sitting back there, is she? No, nope, you're good. Well, that should be good, Chat. Are you gonna bring? You're gonna remember the load of new tractors I bought, right? You're gonna bring them over. Who are you again? Grant. Yeah, it's all right. I got really bad. You're I'm good. I'm starting to get the rest here. I, You're good. I can't think straight anymore. You still got light? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the one thing you remember I got. <laughs> you can't go in the <laughs> Okay. There you go. All right. Hey, I remember you. <laughs> yeah, Grant, yeah. All right, I'll go get your other tractors, bud. Okay. We'll be back. Gosh, it's sad to see Chet like that. Okay, Chet, don't forget the new stuff. Oh, well, that's where we're heading right now. We'll see you, Teresa. Well, guys, it's been two months. Corn's tasseled. Still no sign of Chet in my new tractors. He hasn't, I'm, I'm worried more about Chet and his health and stuff, but he hasn't delivered them. So I'm going to give him a call because it was supposed to be two months ago. We were supposed to get those tractors. Teresa. Who? Grant. Oh, hey, Stacy. How you doing? Nah, I'm just kidding with you. How you doing? Not too shabby, not too shabby. I okay. uh, just got back from a run to Missouri. What do you need? You remember those two tractors I bought? No. Okay, so there's two tractors I need shipped over here from the dealer that I, that we bought. Oh, no! Can you go pick them up? Yeah, I got my low boy on me. I'll, I'll uh... I'll make my way over. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Chet. Yes, sir. Have a good one. I won't work on that this time. I took out your flowers last time. Yeah, that, that'll work. I mean, you can, you can pull in. Uh, I think I'll try this. Okay. So, me and Buck bought a 9380 quad track. 
It's a 1997 model, and then we bought an 8400 1998 model. These two are gonna be our big horses on the farm. The heck are all these sticks in here for? I'd figure it out. Hydraulics, there you go. So there's the 9380, and that's 400 horse. We may tune her too. I know of a guy that's tuned one of the new ones. Got her up to like 450, 500 horse. And then we got the 8400, which puts out, I think, like 250 horse. It's gonna be perfect. There you go, bud. I'm off to, I'm off to St. Louis. Okay, we'll see you, Chet. The 9380 has a PTO. It doesn't have a three point, but it has PTO and hydraulics. So technically, if at a point in the future we can put this on a grain cart if we need to, the 8400, awesome tractor. We'll probably have it on like wagons or something like that in the planter. This is going to be a new duo. Of course, we still will have the, uh, we'll still have the 4755, great tractor, and then we got rid of the 4020. So these are kind of our three main workhorses right now. So, the 8400, check her out. We got a fire fire extinguisher. We got the 16 speed power shift transmission in her. Got a, like a whole new, compared to the old sound guard, got a whole new kind of right side console that is just handy. You got all the hydraulics there. You got the throttle. Like this thing is nice. This is gonna work good. Not, I like our 47, great tractor. This is just gonna be different. The 9380, it's got lever hydraulics still, unfortunately. It's a little more, I would say the 8400 series, the cab is a lot nicer than this, but this is a quad track. This is gonna be nice on compaction, power, traction, all that. We got our PTO there. This is gonna be a nice tractor too. And actually, I haven't even driven this one. So, since we got a bunch of grain in storage and we have a little bit of debt, we're gonna take some of our grain out of storage and sell it because right now, corn prices are extremely high and we have a wheat harvest that's gonna start. So we'll have a lot more grain coming in. So we're gonna get some of this sold, get some of this debt paid off. For now, put the 9380 inside and then we're gonna run the 8400 on a set of wagons and then we're also gonna run the 4755 on a set of wagons. I think we made a good decision, Buck. Did we now? Go jump in that 90, uh, 9380. It's a nice tractor. For what? The Steiger. Oh, yeah. We bought oh, two oh, months ago. Chet holding up? Good. He, he, he forgot about our 9380 and our 8400 we bought. For two months, I was waiting for that thing to show up. I know. It's all good, though. Must, see, I don't think Dementia's treating him too well, is it? No. He's just getting worse and worse poor, every day. Say, poor old guy. Yeah. Such a sweet dude. Yeah. Do you want to get in the 47 and get the wagons hooked up? I'm I'll gonna, do that. Let me get these hooked up. I forgot I hooked up all four wagons. We got all four. I'm going to split them though. So Buck can hold two, I'll hold two. So right now, me and Buck are doing some calculations. I think we're 50-50 roughly on red or a little more red. Buck's got the auger set up. So we'll just pull underneath there. Got a lot of liters of corn. Or bushels, I should say. Okay, we got both those full. Buck's going to fill those. We're going to leave a little in the bin because we need some for hog feed yet. So we're just going to leave a tad bit in the bin, basically like 10,000 liters, and that's going to be totally good for us. Being able to go pretty much 24 mile an hour is going to be super nice. I'll basically beat Buck there and then start unloading before him. Okay, me and Buck are putting in some guesses with if these two loads are going to be able to pay off our debt. I think they are going to. Buck doesn't think they are. We'll see. I think we might get close, but that doesn't look like it's going up very fast. I got more in mind than you do. True. Yeah, we might. It's mine. Oh, now. it's going to be super close, Buck. Dude. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll get it. Yeah, I think you're right. Mine's probably going to be about 18,000, so we'll <laughs> maybe bank three. It is going to be super close. Here we go. Moment of truth. This harvest is going to be crazy. We're going to have so much grain to harvest. We're, we're going to need help from a couple people. Watch, we got a couple helpers lined up. Oh, yeah, we made it. Yeah, we're out of debt. There we go. That's all she wrote. Perfect. Pretty much everything going forward for harvest is going to be profit. And we have a bunch of cattle, too, that have been having babies, and we could sell those. Like, check this out. Our Angus cattle are worth a lot, and then we have a bunch of hogs now. Like, because they've been breeding like crazy, so these hogs, we have a ton of them. So we could sell, we could really sell a lot of these if we want to. Rental man, get out of here. 
Well, guys, I think this is going to be it for the first episode of the 90s. I'm sure it was a crazy long one because it took us like two days to record. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And hey, we'll see you in episode number two. Thanks, guys.